Welcome to First Chapter Friday, 5th edition. I'm Ellen from the Wyckoff Library, and tonight I'll be reading to you The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Prologue. The Alchemist picked up a book that someone in the caravan had brought. Leafing through the pages, he found a story about Narcissus. The Alchemist knew the legend of Narcissus, a youth who knelt daily beside a lake to contemplate his own beauty. He was so fascinated by himself that one morning he fell into the lake and drowned. At the spot where he fell, a flower was born, which was called the Narcissus. But this was not how the author of the book ended the story. He said that when Narcissus died, the goddesses of the forest appeared and found the lake which had been fresh water transformed into a lake of salty tears. Why do you weep, the goddesses asked. I weep for Narcissus, the lake replied. Ah, it is no surprise that you weep for Narcissus, they said, for though we always pursued him in the forest, we, you alone, could contemplate his beauty close at hand. But was Narcissus beautiful, the lake asked? Who better than you to know that, the goddesses said in wonder. After all, it was by your thanks that he knelt each day to contemplate himself. The lake was silent for some time. Finally, it said, I weep for Narcissus, but I never noticed that Narcissus was beautiful. I weep because each time he knelt beside my banks, I could see in the depths of his eyes my own beauty reflected. What a lovely story, the alchemist thought. Part one. The boy's name was Santiago. Dusk was falling as the boy arrived with his herd at an abandoned church. The roof had fallen in long ago and an enormous sycamore had grown on the spot where the sacristy had once stood. He decided to spend the night there. He saw to it that all the sheep entered through the ruined gate and then laid some planks across it to prevent the flock from wandering away during the night. There were no wolves in the region, but once an animal had strayed during the night and the boy had had to spend the entire next day searching for it. He swept the floor with his jacket and lay down, using the book he had just finished reading as a pillow. He told himself that he would have to start reading thicker books. They lasted longer and made more, much more comfortable pillows. It was still dark when he awoke, and looking up he could see the stars through the half-destroyed roof. I wanted to sleep a little longer, he thought. He had had the same dream that night as a week ago, and once again he had awakened before it ended. He arose and, taken up his crook, began to awaken the sheep that still slept. He had noticed that as soon as he awoke, most of his animals also began to stir. It was as if some mysterious energy bound his life to that of the sheep with whom he had spent the past two years, leading them through the countryside in search of food and water. They are so used to me that they know my schedule, he muttered. Thinking about that for a moment, he realized that it could be the other way around, that it was he who would become accustomed to their schedule. But there were certain of them who took a bit longer to awaken. The boy prodded them one by one with his crook, calling each by name. He had always believed that the sheep were able to understand what he said, so there were times when he read them parts of his books that had made an impression on him, or when he would tell them of the loneliness or the happiness of shepherds in the fields. Sometimes he would comment to them on the things he had seen in the villages they passed. But for the past few days, he had spoken to them about only one thing, the girl, the daughter of a merchant who lived in the village they would reach in about four days. He had been to the village only once the year before. The merchant was the proprietor of a dry goods shop and he always demanded that the sheep be sheared in his presence so that he would not be cheated. A friend had told the boy about the shop and he had taken his sheep there. I need to sell some wool, the boy told the merchant. The shop was busy and the man asked the shepherd to wait until the afternoon. So the boy sat on the steps of the shop and took a book from his bag. I didn't know shepherds knew how to read, said a girl's voice behind him. The girl was typical of the region of Al 
Andalusia, with flowing black hair and eyes that vaguely recalled the Moorish conquerors. Well, usually I learn more from my sheep than from books, he answered. During the two hours that they talked, she told him she was the merchant's daughter and spoke of life in the village, where each day was like all the others. The shepherd told her of the Andalusian countryside and related the news from the other towns where he had stopped. It was a pleasant change from talking to a sheep. How did you learn to read? The girl asked at one point. Like everyone, everybody learns, he said, in school. Well, if you know how to read, why are you just a shepherd? The boy mumbled an answer that allowed him to avoid responding to her question. He was sure the girl would never understand. He went on telling stories about his travels and her bright Moorish eyes went wide with fear and surprise. As the time passed, the boy found himself wishing that the day would never end, that her father would stay busy and keep him waiting for three days. He recognized that he was feeling something he had never experienced before, the desire to live in one place forever. With the girl with the raven hair, his days would never be the same again. But finally, the merchant appeared and asked the boy to shear four sheep. He paid for the wool and asked the shepherd to come back the following year. And now it was only four days before he would be back in that same village. He was excited and at the same time uneasy. Maybe the girl had already forgotten him. Lots of shepherds passed through, selling their wool. It doesn't matter, he said to his sheep. I know other girls in other places. But in his heart, he knew that it did matter. And he knew that shepherds, like seamen and traveling salesmen, always found a town where there was someone who could make them forget the joys of carefree wandering. The day was dawning and the shepherd urged his sheep in the direction of the sun. They never have to make any decisions, he thought. Maybe that's why they always stay close to me. The only things that concerned the sheep were food and water. As long as the boy knew how to find the best pastures in Andalusia, they would be his friends. Yes, their days were all the same with the seemingly endless hours between sunrise and dusk. And they had never read a book in their young lives and didn't understand when the boy told them about the sights of the cities. They were content with just food and water. And in exchange, they generously gave up their wool, their company, and once in a while their meat. If I became a monster today and decided to kill them one by one, they would become aware only after most of the flock had been slaughtered, thought the boy. They trust me and they've forgotten how to rely on their own instincts because I'd leave them to nourishment. The boy was surprised at his thoughts. Maybe the church with the sycamore growing from within had been haunted. It had caused him to have the same dream for a second time, and it was causing him to feel anger toward, toward his faithful companions. He drank a bit from the wine that had remained from his dinner of the night before, and he gathered his jacket closer to his body. He knew that for a few hours from now, with the sun at its zenith, the heat would be so great that he would not be able to lead his flock across the fields. It was the time of day when all of Spain slept during the summer. The heat lasted until nightfall, and all that time he had to carry his jacket. But when he thought to complain about the burden of its weight, he remembered that, because he had the jacket, he had withstood the cold of the dawn. We would have to be prepared for a change, he thought and he was grateful for the jacket's weight and warmth. The jacket had a purpose and so did the boy. His purpose in life was to travel and after two years of walking the Andalusian terrain, he knew all the cities of the region. He was planning on this visit to explain to the girl how it was that a simple shepherd knew how to read, that he had attended a seminary until he was 16. His parents had wanted him to become a priest and there were thereby a source of pride for a simple farm family. They had worked hard just to have food and water like the sheep. He had studied Latin, Spanish, and theology.
But ever since he had been a child, he had wanted to know the world, and this was much more important to him than knowing God and learning about man's sins. One afternoon on a visit to his family, he had summoned up the courage to tell his father that he didn't want to become a priest, that he wanted to travel. I will stop at this point, and I just want to mention that if you would like to con re continue reading this, you can download the ebook and audiobook through either Hoopla and Libby. I hope you've enjoyed The Alchemist. Have a nice night.